Hi guys. So I want to know, have you ever just like gone through life doing what you normally do and then just like stop and think and think, uh, what am I doing? So I had a, a case like that a few weeks ago. I was cooking dinner and I don't even know what I was cooking, but I looked down at my hand. I was adding a little oil and I had this in my hand and I thought, oh my gosh, how tacky is this on my counter? <laughs> I'm a potter, oh my gosh, I can do better than this. So I set out to change this tacky thing and I, or rather replace it, and I came up with some oil bottles and I made them all different. So I wanna show you how I made them and maybe you too have this problem and you can buy some mine. So I can solve your problem for you. Let me show you how I made them. I used about a pound and a half of smooth white stoneware for these. It's Georgie's G Mix, which I use for almost all of my pots. Once I wedged and weighed the clay, I moved on to throwing the bottles. I had a few goals with throwing these. I wanted to make them comfortable to hold, first of all. I wanted them to be narrow enough so they weren't cumbersome to hold and would fit nicely in the hand. I also needed the top of the bottles to fit the cork and pour spout part of the bottle once it was finished, so I needed to narrow at the top, which means I didn't start too wide as it's easier to go wider later than to bring it in narrower. I just bought the corks online on Amazon, and I also wanted each oil bottle I made to be different from the other ones. I like playing around with different forms and experimenting. It's a fun challenge for me. On these bottles, I finished the foot while I was throwing. I have an old credit card that I cut a notch out of, and it works great for this. I just hold it along the base when I'm done throwing, and it makes the foot really easily. I did that on these pots for a couple reasons. First, it completely eliminates the need to trim, and this is good because it saves time, and things like these narrow bottles are tricky to trim. <laughs> and second, it's super easy to do, and it looks cool! I tend to use this method on things like mugs, small vases, and bottles like these. If I'm trimming, I'd rather do it on a big bowl than a small bottle. It's just easier. Once the bottles were leather hard, I carved them all differently. Just some fun simple carvings that add interest and fun. On the first one, I did flowers. This is really easy. <laughs> just a circle in the middle and petals coming off of it. I really like simple carving. It adds some great texture and interest to pottery. Next, I played with some blue and yellow colored slip I made using mason stains. Mason stains are a powdered color that works great for adding color to pottery. In this case, I just added it to liquid clay. I put the slip on in a spiral and then spread it around with my fingers. Then I used a tool to add more texture and I finished by adding carved lines. This doesn't really show the true colors until it's glaze fired and adding a clear glaze on top really brings out the colors too. Then I decided to do some vertical lines on the next one. Again, super simple carving, that's kind of my thing, but it really enhances the piece. I like doing broken lines rather than just straight lines all the way down, as it's more visually interesting and more fun to carve. <laughs> For the more curvy bottle, I decided to really play up the curves with curvy lines. Super simple repeating curves, but it really enhances the bottle. And then for the last bottle, I carved dots and curvy lines. Very simple. <laughs> Then I went back and added colored slips to the dots, which really creates this cool polka dot effect under a clear or translucent glaze, like a light colored celadon glaze. Then they were all ready for the bisque kiln. This first firing is a lower temperature than the second firing, but it's still around 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit, so still very hot. This firing prepares the pots to be glazed later. They all came out of the bisque kiln great, no explosions. <laughs> That's always a good thing. I decided to glaze these all differently, as I'm a big fan of fun colors, so I wanted these to be colorful. I'm also a big fan of blue, as you may or may not have noticed in my previous pottery, if you've seen my other videos, so a lot of these ended up blue. <laughs> then I put them back in the kiln for their final firing. This firing is about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's the final step in maturing the glaze and strengthening the pot. They turned out so great! I'm really happy with how they look. Which one do you like best? Let me know in the comments. One of them ended up with a few minor pinholes, so I decided to keep that one. 
Okay, truth be told, I'd had my eye on that particular one the whole time. It's my favorite shape of all of them, and it's really comfortable to hold and use. I've been using that one at home for a couple weeks now, and I really like it. It's a whole lot better than that plastic bottle. They work really well, and I can't wait to make more. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.